Welcome to this very brief introduction to the history of Dunlop Kirk. The church is still very much at the heart of the village and occupies an impressive site at the lower end of Main Street, described by Reverend John F. Bain in his book Dunlop Parish as beautifully situated in a miniature landscape of river, hill and dell. It is in a designated outstanding conservation area and has 27 beautiful stained glass windows. Like many other churches, Dinlock Church has seen turbulent times throughout Scotland's history. During the time of the Covenanters and the Reformation in the 16th century and the disruption in the 19th century when there was a bitter schism in the Church of Scotland. Starting at the beginning, early records show that the first church in Dinlock was built in the 12th century. At that time, the priests came under the authority of the monks at Kilwinning Abbey. In 1766, a church was built on the existing site, and this was replaced in 1835 by the present church. The original architectural features from an earlier church built in 1641 have been included at the entrance to the Dunlop Isle in the North Gable. This isle belonged to the family of Dunlop of Dunlop, to whom the church owed a great debt for their interest, generosity and patronage. Over the lintel of the entrance is a deep frieze and cornice from which rise two columns with composite pillars. In the centre of the stone is an inscription surrounded with a fancifully carved scroll work typical of the Elizabethan and early Jacobean period. In the centre are two monograms, I, D and E, C with the date 1641 above. These are the initials of James Dunlop, 15th of that ilk, and his wife Elizabeth. Underneath the aisle is a burial vault of the Dunlops of that ilk, which is entered from the outside. In 1881, Thomas Douglas Cunningham Graham, then proprietor of Dunlop House, gifted a series of handsome stained glass windows executed by Powell of London. In 1884, the whole of the pews, choir platform and pulpit were entirely remodelled. These improvements were carried out according to plans and designs by John W. Small. Sadly, the benefactor, Mr. Graham, died on the very day the work was completed. In 1845, only two years after the disruption between the Church of Scotland and the Free Church of Scotland, Dunlop Free Church was built at the top of Main Street. In 1958, both congregations rejoined and the Free Church building was converted to Dunlop Church Hall, still in use today. In his book, the Reverend John F. Bain describes the subsequent 1924-25 renovations thus. The congregation, deeply sensible of the value of their place of worship, have shown their love and appreciation by responding generously to every appeal to preserve and enhance its beauty. In 1924, the sum of £1,125 was raised for further renovations and decoration. Electric lighting was installed and the vestry was enlarged and tastefully furnished. Dunlop Kirk also had a connection with the Anchor Line Steamship Company. In the upper west wall, there is a tall stained glass window depicting Adam on the left and Jesus on the right. This window was donated by Francis Henderson, one of the brothers who owned the Glasgow-based Anchor Line. He was a regular worshipper in the church while living in Dunlop House. This window was designed by the famous Scottish stained glass artist Alf Webster in 1910 and is known as the Alf Webster window. It would be wrong to finish without a mention of the Clandy Boys Hall and the Hans Hamilton tomb, both A-listed buildings immediately adjacent to the church and very much part of the church's history. The Clandy Boys School was erected by Viscount Clandy Boys in memory of his parents, Hans Hamilton and his wife Janet. 
Hans Hamilton was minister in Dunlop for 45 years. An outside staircase once led up to a small two-room apartment for the schoolmaster and a single downstairs room was used as a schoolroom. It was one of the first free schools in Scotland. The inscription above the door is dated 1641. In 1925, the Clandy Boys was converted to a single storey, small hall for the use of the Junior Sunday School. More detailed information on the A-listed Clandy Boys Hall is available in the Dunlop Kirk and the Ulster Scots item. More detailed information on the A-listed Hans Hamilton tomb is available in the Ulster Scots item mentioned above. This building adjoins the rear of the Clandy Boys Hall and is a burial place of the minister, Hans Hamilton, and his wife, Janet. The building measures about 12 feet by 10 feet and is constructed of ashlar, the same type of sandstone as the church itself. It was erected by the minister's son, James Viscount Clandy Boys. The tomb was known locally as a picture house because at one time the interior was brightly painted and gilded. The tomb had fallen into disrepair, but has recently been made wind and water tight by East Ayrshire Council. The two marble statues depicting the minister and his wife, both kneeling towards each other with hands raised as if in prayer, have now been returned to their rightful place in the tomb. Many ministers in Dunlop made their mark nationally, but are too many to mention individually over a period of almost a thousand years. Hans Hamilton has been mentioned already, but there was John Major, a professor in Glasgow University, who was tutor to John Knox, and also Gabriel Cunningham, who preached at the opening of the first General Assembly of the Church of Scotland. And so it goes on to the present day, still spreading the word of God in this small part of Ayrshire and beyond. On the 29th of January 2009, Caldwell Parish Church at Plumour and Dunlop Parish Church formed a linkage in the Presbytery of Irvine and Kilmarnock. It is a very happy linkage, with both congregations supporting each other and many friendships have formed. In 2019, we held a joint service of celebration to mark our 10th anniversary. Professor Alistair Ingalls and Margaret Hunter, session clerk at the start of the linkage, cut the cake and all enjoyed a special night. Moving into the 21st century, and as mentioned elsewhere, in 2008, a major outbreak of dry rot was discovered, as well as defects in the external stonework. After a huge fundraising effort, Repair and restoration work involving restructuring the whole of the interior was undertaken between 2008 and 2012 at a total cost of £750,000. Due to the extent of the interior repairs, the decision was made to reorganise the whole layout of the church with the installation of chairs instead of pews. To maximise the space, it was also decided not to reinstate the pulpit. The changes have created a warm and welcoming environment. In 2018, a wooden cross constructed from wood from the original pews was installed on the south wall as a focal point. The renovated church is much more flexible in its layout and is able to be used not only for Sunday worship, but also for school services at Easter and Christmas, plus concerts and other activities throughout the week. The year 2020 has been unlike any other with the closure of the church due to the COVID-19 pandemic and with weekly worship taking place on the internet under the Cat Tree Church. But as you can see from our history, there have been many difficult and tumultuous times in the past. So we hope that in the near future, we will be able once again to welcome the congregation and the wider community back into our church and that in time, we will be once again open for visitors on a regular basis.